Ooh. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, Omaze raises money and awareness for charity by offering the chance to win once in a lifetime experiences. So what we've done is we've taken a traditional model of celebrity auction where you take you know these chances um, where you can go hang out with a celebrity, and typically, historically, those have only ever been available to wealthy people at auctions. So you go to these like charity galas and um, and they put those up at auction. In fact, that's sort of how our story began. My co-founder Matt and I were at a charity gala where Magic Johnson was auctioning off the chance to hang out with him, go to a Lakers game, uh, shoot around, sit four sides. We were huge, lifelong Magic Johnson fans. We wanted nothing more than to participate in that auction. Uh, but it was only available to the wealthy people sitting in that room. There were about 200 of them. We were in grad school at the time. I was actually at Anderson at the time. Um, and, uh, and it ended up clearing for $15,000. Um, I don't know about, and so real quick, show of hands, how many people here have $15,000 that they could throw an experience right now? Neither did I. So um, so we were driving home that night and we were really frustrated. We said, you know, think about how much more money that could have raised, how much more you know, awareness they could have garnered for the Boys and Girls Club of America took this icon like Magic Johnson and instead of just saying, you know, at auction, giving that opportunity to wealthy individuals, democratizing it to the masses. So online for five or ten dollars, anybody could enter this raffle for the chance to win. Um, and that's where I, our idea came together and, uh, and when we graduated we went out and set up that idea and we took it live as a company and here we are two years later and we've done over 250 experiences. Um, we've raised almost uh, somewhere between, by the end of this year, we'll be somewhere between 15 and 20 million dollars in charity. Um, we've gotten literally billions of media impressions for the charities that we've worked with um, and the celebrities that we partner with. And, uh, and we have a company that's, um, that's doing really well um, right now. So I did not know what it is. It's coming around me. Um, so that is, that's Omaze. Um, in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to have uh, two members of Omaze, so it's a delight to find out we're here tonight, uh, introduce themselves and, uh, and share with you guys what they do at Omaze. Yeah, so uh, my name's Brianna, you can call me Bri, or I like to go by Briance at the office. <laughs> um, I am the community coordinator at Omaze, which I had probably the best job in the company, but I manage our online like, social um, community, and so like you guys can just up on Facebook or Twitter and have questions about your order. It's me responding. And um, I'm it's super excited because we're launching an awesome intern program. So we're looking to take on, yeah, new interns in January. And it's just like an awesome atmosphere to like dive in and be super hands-on and learn. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to get started with that. Yeah. Cool, awesome. Hi everyone, I'm John Janino. Uh, I'm actually one of the interns at Omaze that started a couple months ago. Uh, really excited to be here. I'm sure Ryan didn't know I was going to be here. Um, I actually graduated from here at UCLA uh, in June. Woo, go Bruins! Um, and you know, I, I, I mainly help with the social media. Um, you know, especially now today in, in the new age of technology, really activating the masses. Uh, tech, social media plays such a big role um, in not only inspiring people but getting people to um, realize that they have agency to create positive change. So. Not only just putting out content, but um, you know, helping put out our word about our experiences and, and making sure that we're hitting different markets and getting people from all over the country and all over the world. So um, I've only started two months ago, and I, I really loved Omaze because we just have the opportunity to learn from a lot of people who just want to do good things for, for our community. Um, it's an amazing opportunity to learn from people from different backgrounds, like with, with uh, Ryan here who went to uh, business school and. and Brianna here, who just has so much experience in other organizations, um, and I think the internship program has really been really fulfilling, so I encourage you all to check it out. Working for a startup is really fun. I'm sure all of you here, entrepreneurs, are thinking about going into a startup environment. Uh, it moves really, really fast, and you're kind of just learning every single day, and I think that's what I love about it, is that you're constantly testing new ideas, and, and sometimes you're really successful, and sometimes not, but you're learning every single day. So that's what I love about Amaze. Real quick, real quick background on John, too, by the way. Uh, John, as you mentioned, started interning for us two months ago. Um, he 
keeps showing up at random things that I'm involved in all around LA. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a meeting the other day with one of our uh, with one of our potential clients, and I walked in, and John greeted me at the door because he works there as well. And I had no idea that that was at the Good Foundation, and uh, and then I came here tonight, and there he is again. So I got to UCLA, and I also found out tonight I didn't even know this. John was the president of UCLA Student Body while he's here, so. If you guys want some inside tips, don't, you know, it's not me, it's John that you should be going to for how to, how to work in the system. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are different things that we could share about the background of Omez, um, but really, you know, this, this night's more about you guys than it is about us just sort of rattling off our story. So in a second here, we'll open it up to Q&A, and um, feel free to ask me any questions under the sun. Um, if there are any that are too hard for me to answer, I'm just going to pass them on to Brianna. Um, but uh, but real quick, you know, a couple more pieces of information, you know, in terms of where we are as a company. We were six people back in January, so we sort of went our first year, and we were at steady state for up, you know somewhere between two and six people. We're at over thirty now, um, so uh, in a very short amount of time, we've grown pretty dramatically in this last year, and. Uh, we um, we're less than a year, and uh, and we're on a roadmap right now to be 90. Um, you know, in another 18 months, um, we, like I said, have put on 250 experiences, um, and we've worked with dozens and dozens of charities. Everybody from uh, Red Cross to the um, Boys and Girls Club of America to the Children's Hospital LA, um, Wounded Warriors. You know, if it's in veterans or children's education or um, you know, animals, or uh, right now we're about to launch a campaign around World AIDS Day. Um, we sort of, we, we're charity agnostic so long as it's a highly qualified charity that is sort of doing something that is worthwhile where we can sort of track the funds and know that it's actually going to make a really good impact out in the world. Um, to that end, we're also celebrity agnostic. You know, we've worked, we've done experiences from, you know, to rattle off a couple. We did, you know, day night with George Clooney, walk the red carpet, hang out with him, and Monuments Man. We did a night on the town with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. You get to play poker, hang out with those two guys. Um, we did crush a tank or crush a car while riding a tank with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, it was Arnold's tank that he bought. Um, <laughs> it was actually his tank when he was 18 years old. He was in the Austrian army. And he decided uh, once he made a lot of money that he'd just go back and buy the tank because why not? Um, so we got to spend a day crushing things with him. Um, Today in London, as we speak, the winner of the, the uh, Star Wars experience, um, he and his best friend got to get suited up in London, go hang out with J.J. Abrams, and then be in a scene in Star Wars Episode Seven. We found out that today went so well that they're bringing them back to be in another scene tomorrow. Um, so two for the price of one. Uh, so we've done them all. Sort of runs the gamut. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's what we do. Uh, this is, as I understand it, um, uh, an organization where you guys are here because you're entrepreneurs, you're interested in probably trying to understand what entrepreneurship is, um, what that actually means, what it what it takes to start a company, uh, how you go and raise money. A lot of you guys are probably thinking about like how you go IPO and make millions of dollars very quickly, so you can go retire and buy your parents a house and get yourself a boat and all those things that I still want to do myself one day. Um, so uh, let's just open it up for Q&A, find out what you guys are most interested in, what you want answers about, and go from there. I saw that hand first. But we have plenty of time, by the way, so I'm sure if any of you guys have questions, we're going to get them. So how did you first contact like, celebrities and the charities? And, like, how did you first contact celebrities? Like, as a start -up. Yeah, I just sleep outside Matt Damon's house. Like, <laughs> um, and then finally Ben Affleck was like, dude, you now, so my co-founder and I uh, went to undergrad at Stanford. Uh, we come down here every summer and intern for the studios. Um, when we graduated, came down here. We both shared this passion for creating cause content um, that led to a bunch of different projects we worked on. You know, we were the first directors on Live Earth, which was the largest concert ever thrown in 2007. Um, most recently, we executive produced all of the creative content for the Clinton Foundation and their 10-year anniversary concert. Um, so we've been working in the space for a really long time. It was something we were very passionate about. Uh, we're super passionate about storytelling. Um, so we cared about that first, and then through literally through a bunch of failure um, and different projects. Some of them, not all failure, some were great. Those concepts were fantastic. Um, but just trial and error along the way, we finally sort of realized that um, the job. 
job that we wanted didn't exist and that if we were going to get it, we have to create it. Um, that's why I ended up at Anderson, is we both went back to B school at the same time, so we could spend two years training ideas back and forth um, because we wanted to understand for-profit enterprise and we wanted to figure out if there was some way that we could take all of this knowledge that we had accrued in the space of cause content and apply it towards a new model that could grow and scale and have a sustainable revenue stream to it. Um, and that's one lesson that I would give you guys if you're gonna go try and start a company. Um, a lot of companies in today's day and age, a lot of the apps out there are all about building an audience. You just go build an audience and you're gonna get you know marketing spend and people or sponsors are gonna come in and give you money and you're gonna go IPO your company, that's the best way to do it. If you can try and figure out a business that um, that's cash flow positive from day one, where you are either trading a good or a service, and people are giving you money in exchange for that good or service, and the amount of money that they're giving you in exchange for that good or service is more than what it costs you to give them that good or service, then you have a pretty solid foundation for a profitable company. Um, and if you can do that, then, you, then you're off to a good start. And uh, that was something we wanted to do because we saw that in the space of cost content, we chasing funds, and that wasn't a great lifestyle. Um, so we How did you go about assembling your team? How did we go about assembling our team? Uh, similar situation, like we, we didn't know anything about doing it at the beginning. We've never managed people at that level. We've never started a company much like this. We've done projects. Um, so we did one thing that I'd recommend everybody here do. We did uh, the LA Startup Weekend, which was like a hackathon. Um, obviously, you guys are probably all pretty familiar with hackathons. Uh, these like 24 or 48 hour blitzes where you go and you form a team and everybody just you know pitches, usually on the first night everybody will pitch an idea and then you go and you find out whose idea is the best or the sexiest and you go sit with them and, um, and go to those, go to as many of those as you can. Go join teams that have stupid ideas, go join teams that have good ideas, like just go. Um, get yourself there because um, you will begin learning principles of business that you don't even necessarily learn. Know our principles of business, and most of the time you get to do it while drinking beer and hanging out with cool people, um, which is a great combination. So uh, we did that. We tested the idea. Um, in 48 hours, we built a website. We called in a favor of a guy named Peter Diamandis, who was the founder of XPRIZE, um, and he said he'd offer up an experience. We made like $2,000 on it that weekend, and we were like, and granted that was like all our family and friends and the people in the room, but we were like, hey, if we could at least convince our family and friends and people in the room to give us $2,000, then maybe we can convince you know, people we don't know to give us $10,000 or $20,000. And so based off of that, and uh, off of um, a deck that we put together, we went out and raised money, um, and circling back to your question, from there we just started seeing like, who were the people that we needed to hire. So the hackathon really taught us sort of the basic structure of a team, a developer, someone in marketing, someone who's gonna um, manage your finances. You know, there are key people in every one of those departments. And if you guys just go and look at businesses, look at the C-level of businesses, and you'll see that there's a CMO, a, C a CTO, a CFO. Um, you, guys know what you, you guys are all familiar with those acronyms? Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Technology Officer, Chief Financial Officer. Um, when you need all of those people, even if that's not their title, you need them at a lower level. Um, and so, uh, you'll find them at Hackathon. It's a good, good place to start. Yeah. Three questions. Yeah, three, all right. Two, two, three, four. Um, first one, how old were you when we started this? I was, I'm, I'm older, I'm 34 now, so I was in business school when I was 29, to 31, so I was technically 31, 32. Um, what did you major in undergrad? Economics, I was terrible at it. <laughs> uh, no, no joke, I suck at economics. And, uh, and so that's actually why I would come down to LA, is I would come down here because I'm actually really passionate about storytelling, and really terrible at uh, accounting. And, uh, and I did that because um, I thought it'd give me a business background, but I don't think that any of what I learned in economics, this is probably terrible advice to give you guys, but I don't think that any of what I learned in economics actually carried over. Yeah. And then what were some of the difficulties? But there was a wonderful program. <laughs> <laughs> My kids do it. <laughs> you know. What were some of the difficulties you encountered when you first were building the company? Uh, what are some? I mean, some of the big main how, do you, how do you form a team? We had that same question. We didn't know. Uh, how do you raise money? We had no idea how to do that. Um, would this model work? If it 
does work? How do you get the message regardless of what the product or service is? Like, how do you, like, really simple question, like, is there one person out there that you don't know that's willing to open up their wallet and give you money for that thing? Um, how do you get their attention even before you ask them whether or not they're willing to give you money? Um, it's, and, and it's different for every business. It's a different case for every business, but, like, we face literally all of those just ground zero questions that you guys are going to face yourself when you start a company. Um, and they're hard. Yeah? You said you started the business school at 29. What did you do after undergrad to that point? I wonder that every day. <laughs> <laughs> what I do? I, uh, I graduated undergrad. I went and worked on a feature film. Um, I then got repped as a director with a management firm here in L.A. Started working on my own feature films, commercials. Um, from there, started working as a director, producer, and writer for concerts. And then that got me on that cause content path. So then I did Live Earth. And then from there, I went and created a media property where I filmed a couple hundred Nobel Prize winners, MacArthur Junior Fair Association, Pulitzers. I'd also recommend that you guys do that. If ever you have a chance, not that whole thing, but I'd recommend like that idea of as quickly as you possibly can putting yourself out there to meet as many people who know more about something than you do. It's a very simple sentence, but like, go find experts in different fields, even if they're not fields you're interested in. Um, you know, I didn't want to be a mathematician or a physicist or any of those things, but I wanted to understand why these people were such geniuses and how they ticked, what made them tick. And, uh, and I went and I interviewed all of them, and I asked them all really simple questions, not about their work, but about like life. And, uh, and the point of my sharing that is like that really taught me how to listen, as opposed to just like thinking that I always knew stuff um, and thinking that I was really bright. That taught me how to shut up and listen, and uh, and then get much better at asking questions. And I found out that once I started getting better at asking questions, I actually got real information and information that was going to be helpful for whatever it was that I wanted to do. Um, in college, this is not to say that this applies to you guys, but it definitely applied to me. I thought that I knew a lot. I thought that I was pretty bright, and I thought that um, I sort of had a really good handle on things, and until, literally it wasn't until I was like 26, 27, that I went and started interviewing all these other people that I realized how little I actually knew, and how liberating that was to feel as though like it's totally okay not to know everything, and that process of getting education, that like real education, not like just like books and stuff that you do when you're sitting in boring lecture halls, but like real education when you're starting to understand things and, and patterns and systems and how people think and how they work and interactions and behaviors. Um, that's like a lifelong joy that everybody should embrace. Um, and if it's with business or just for your own self personally, I really highly recommend doing that. And it's as simple as literally calling people. Right now you guys have a key, really wonderful key to unlock doors to people. And that's calling them up and asking for advice. If you want money, um, so how the saying goes. If, uh, if you want money, ask for advice. And if you want advice, ask for money. Um, you guys can call anyone you want right now and say, I am so-and-so an undergrad at UCLA. Uh, I'd love some advice. I'd love to just come sit down in front of you. I know that you do X, Y, Z things. If you have 20 minutes or 15 minutes, it'd be great to just spare time. And right now, anybody will bring you into their office and talk to you. And they love talking to you just like I'm doing right now. I'm just feeling it. The point is people like to hear themselves talk. Um, but like, use that right now while you have that opportunity um, because you can learn a lot. Somebody asked Bree or John a question. Oh, <laughs> yeah, boring. No, I, 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 I,